Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, this series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. You can do this for each episode. The way you do it is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you would like me to run with, and I will pick one of the highly rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Gus Mather. He says, Desert Rat World War II Australian. The SV-98, iron sights, no accessory, no barrel, straight pull bolt, desert camo. M1911, any preferred attachment. C4, PLD, uh, using as binoculars. Any field upgrade? M67, I'm sorry, I know you like the minis. After I saw that you used a World War II loadout with a DMR in Battlefield 3, I thought that you could make a more standard loadout. This may prove to be tricky, but if I could pull it off, I think you could do 10 times better. Now this is without a doubt a tricky loadout to use. It's difficult, there aren't a lot of cool gadgets in it that are gonna give me a good advantage. Um, I get one shot to take somebody down in close quarters, then I gotta switch to a pistol and hope that they haven't killed me at that point. So it's very hard to use. You have to absolutely be on your toes and know exactly where people are or at least just be constantly whipping around to make sure nobody sneaks up on you because if you miss any of your shots or if you don't get the drop on somebody, then it's game over. Now obviously the huge advantage of running with a bolt action sniper rifle is that you can do a hundred damage in close quarters that's 12 meters 12 and a half meters to be precise or closer you can one shot somebody with a body shot you don't have to worry about trying to aim for the head which would be crazy hard to do in that kind of range and uh, especially with moving targets so if you can just get that body shot off you can be okay you can down them with one shot but if you don't get that body shot you hit them in the legs or um, they're like 13 meters away and you don't do 100% damage to them, then that's where things start to get dicey. The SV-98 can hold 10 rounds plus one in the chamber, which is decent, and the rate of fire is 50 rounds per minute, so slightly less than one per second, which is okay, but again, in close quarters, you're not gonna really have a lot of time to re-chamber around if somebody's in your face. You have to switch to that pistol, otherwise you just really don't have a chance of winning that firefight. Now, I know the name of this loadout, Desert Rat, kind of pertains to the fact that you're fighting in the desert and trying to hide and be stealthy and that sort of thing but rat really does pertain to the way that you gotta play this game you have to sort of sneak in take a shot retreat tactically you want to be unpredictable you don't want to be in places where people uh, know you are and if they see you on the minimap and they're coming to get you try and hide in a place where they're not gonna expect it back up a little bit just move your location ever so slightly to give you that split second advantage where you can get off that shot in close quarters and take them down because this loadout is so dangerous in close quarters and very ineffective against multiple targets you really do have to try and set yourself up to engage people at either medium to longish range or just deal with one at a time if you see two people in close quarters you absolutely want to take out the uh, the biggest threat first I mean that's sort of common sense for any weapon but it's a particularly important for this one because if somebody's staring at you and you shoot the guy who's got his back turned to you there's no way you're gonna make it out of that. You're dead, you can't rechamber around, even switching your pistol, you're not gonna have enough time to deal with your target. So you absolutely have to be on your toes. This is an advanced player's loadout, at least if you're looking to do well with it. So I wouldn't recommend trying this for any novice player out there. Now of course you do, if you are looking to rank up the SV-98 and unlock more things for it, and you're just horrible with scopes, you know, anything with magnification on it, then this might be the way to run it at first, but I would recommend trying to use a red dot sight as soon as you get one. Your sidearm is a very important part of this loadout because in any close quarter situation, when you take your first shot, you want to be switching to that sidearm almost automatically because if you miss that shot, you need to follow it up as soon as possible, and that's what the sidearm is for. The 1911 actually got upgraded in the most recent patch, the patch that was released on January 30th. Unfortunately, this update was so freaking minor that it doesn't make a big difference. Right now, the bullet velocity was just upgraded from 250 meters per second to 270 meters per second I suppose making it slightly more effective at hitting moving targets at range other than that there isn't really a great upgrade I'm hoping that uh, the description on battle log um, pertains to some changes that are coming in the future to actually make the 1911 a bit more accurate and a bit more useful. Now check this out, I'm playing on Rogue Transmission, I'm holding down this little fort here, I'm going to uh, take out a few people that are sneaking up on me, because it's it's the beginning of the round and I'm being trying to be a little stealthy, somehow that guy wasn't able to kill me. I anticipate this guy coming here and this shot is perfectly straight on and no hit markers at all, watch it back in slow-mo. Watching this over and over, I think that the window blocked my shot. 
I'm not sure what was going on there, but uh, there was no bullet trail that went through the window, so I don't think it was a hitbox issue. It's sort of a weird issue. I haven't gone back to test it out, but I thought I would share it with you guys nonetheless. Now this loadout is perfectly capable at longer ranges. I know you're gonna see me get a lot of kills here in close quarters and stuff like that, but uh, the long range potential of this gun is certainly there. You just don't have the magnification, the sight, to really facilitate that. So if you got great accuracy while using iron sights, then you should be fine at long range. And I was certainly getting some kills, but you're not gonna be able to pinpoint headshots. You almost have to kind of just go for body shots or shoot for the general mass of the target. Oftentimes they absorb one shot and are able to run off and uh, hide somewhere or kill you before you're able to get a second shot off. The SV-98 also has decent hip fire considering that it's a bolt action sniper rifle. Almost all of the bolt actions have 5.0 hip fire rating. This one has a 4.0 hip fire rating. The most accurate bolt action sniper rifle is the Scout Elite for hip fire that is, and it has a 3.5 uh, hip fire rating. So unfortunately it doesn't have the laser sight on here which would take that down even further and I would probably not miss as many hip fire shots as I did with this but uh, that's just something to keep in mind if you're not going for the authentic World War II style loadout you might want to try a laser sight on the SV-98 to just help you out in some of those last minute twitch reflex situations. And when I really started to get into the groove of this loadout I won't ever say that this is a good loadout. It's incredibly hard to use and uh, even the best players would be much better off using anything more conventional but even when I got in the groove and I was enjoying it more it made me really want to go back and play Battlefield 1942 on one of the uh, classic maps like Tobruk or something where there was like trench warfare tank stoppers and you could sort of get down in these little ditches uh, with your trenches and get out your little bolt action rifles and try and headshot people that was a great thing to do in 1942 the game was very difficult and very barren but having the desert camo and that sort of thing really made me feel like ah this would be a perfect map to use this kind of loadout. So I won't say give this loadout a try I think this is going to be incredibly aggravating for anyone even an advanced player many of the games I had were very aggravating. My recommendations for this loadout is to try and find a map that you know really well you can sort of be stealthy move around the way you want to move around it and perhaps even find a server that has some really bad players on it because you're going to need it to get kills with this setup. As always guys, thanks for watching. Remember to leave some comments down below letting me know what you would like me to rent for next week's episode. And I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.